I just saw it all. And I was gone. And I and I wake up to him shaking me. And he's like, Najee, Najee, like, Najee, wake up, wake up, wake up. And I had like quickly realized what happened. Push P. Yeah, push P. Turn me up. Turn me up, P. Point us in the paddock, get my piece. A push a piece. Cop no hammers for my piece. We don't want no piece. Greetings, my kindreds. Welcome back to another video. First and foremost, if you are new, welcome. My name is Najee. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell notification button too so that way you don't miss another upload. And so that way you can become a part of the Kindred family, you know? Nonetheless, this video is going to be a lot of bit different. As you can tell from the title, this is going to be your typical vlog that you would normally see on this channel. We're going to be touching bases on a few sensitive topics and I choose today to kind of shed light on some of these issues because honestly, your Kindred has been going through it like I've been finding myself in like a really dark space lately and I no longer want to be there and I feel like in order for me to break myself free of my burdens I need to just go ahead and just talk about it like talk about it you know let it out um, begin therapy and just really step into this next phase of my healing journey and not only do I believe that me speaking on some of my experiences will help me step foot into the next phase of my self-love journey, I really do believe that there's a kindred out there that honestly needs to hear this. I've been trying to record this video for like the past three days, honestly. Every time I've done my makeup, I've done my hair, I've sat in front of the camera and I, my anxiety would just go skyrocket and I would immediately start crying and um, I was literally sitting in front of the camera for like three, four hours and not say a word. That's how bad it's been. Uh, I don't know if I've ever shared, but I suffer from anxiety, depression, and PTSD. I don't even want to say suffer. I don't suffer from it. I'm dealing with it. I deal with anxiety, depression, and PTSD. And that is okay. Like, it's nothing to be ashamed about. Um, but before we get into the details of this video, I want to give a special shout out and thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I'm so excited to tell you guys about what BetterHelp is and how you too can benefit from its platform. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. This video is geared towards those who may be dealing with depression, anxiety, or have to experience abuse within their intimate relationship. Therapy gives you an opportunity to explore your thoughts, feelings, and patterns of behaviors. Most form of abuse can break one's confidence. Therapy can help you challenge unrealistic expectations of yourself, and rebuilding your self-esteem is a common goal within therapy. Or is there something else interfering with your happiness, or is preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp is here to assist you and to match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating with them within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. Is professional therapy done securely online? There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist networks, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account at any time. And you can send a message to your therapist literally at any time. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. So that way you don't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room while your anxiety is kicking your ass. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is too available. It's obvious that BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. So visit BetterHelp.com. That's Better H-E-L-P and join over 2 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. You can also get 10% off of your first month by visiting BetterHelp.com slash Najee. So my kindreds are pretty much up to date on like what's been going on with me for like the past couple of months. Um, based off of like what I chose or decided to share. Um, if you are new to this channel, then you probably most likely obviously do not know. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that like a couple of months ago, maybe about six months ago, my ex, which is still my 
which is still currently my husband, he um, put his hands on me for the very last time and um, broke my jaw into three places and I have not seen him since. Um, and I decided to post um, it on social media, even with my jaw shifted and broken into three places, I found myself still in a space where I felt like I loved this person and that I wanted to be with this person, that I was just so hurt and I was just like so shocked that like, you know, things really went this far. And when I realized that I lost my damn mind for feeling this way, you know, I was like, no, you have to hold yourself, yourself accountable at this point. So in order for me to hold myself accountable, I decided to post, um, slightly post what I've been going through for like the past couple of years and what had just transpired on social media. And I did that, like I said, to hold myself accountable. I felt like, okay, if I post this, then I would be crazy to go back. Like I would be, I would look stupid. And the last thing I want to do is like look stupid. I had to literally just like hold myself accountable and put myself in a position where um, um, I am being like looked up to in a way. Like, okay, well, if she can leave, then so can I. So I, I kind of sort of put that on myself by sharing um, what kind of sharing what I've been going through for the past couple um, of years. Um, mind you, we've been together for eight years, and for like the past three years or two years of it, we were on and off. Um, and a lot of people ask me, and still continue to ask me, um, why did you stay? Like, what made you stay so long? You know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, being that you were in a domestic violence like type of relationship, and honestly. The true answer to that is, I didn't know that I was in a domestic violence relationship. I didn't look at my situation like that. Um, we met when I was 18 years old. I was um, 18. Was I 18? Yeah, I was 18. Um, I met when we met when I was 18 in boot camp. We went to boot camp together. Um, if you guys don't know, I did do five years in the United States Navy, and that's where we met. We we met in boot camp. We started seeing each other when we were in A school. We were like A school buddies. Like, and it was me who made the first move. Like, I saw this boy and I just thought that he was so handsome. And you know, we fresh out of boot camp. Like, you know, I had some A school eyes and I saw him sitting um, outside on the, on the bench and everyone was like taking pictures with their cell phones and stuff. And so like, I went over to him and I was like, can we take a picture together? And we took our pictures together. I, he had, I put his arm like around my shoulder so it can like look like, you know what I'm saying? Cute or whatnot. And we were taking pictures and then I ended up like grabbing his hand and holding his hand. And ever since then, it was kind of like, I like him. And he like, I like her. You know, it was like that. And so like the beginning, it was, it was cute. It was, it was, it was great. Like I could be myself, he could be himself. You know, we would talk about any and everything. We spent almost all of our time together in A school. And by the time it was time for us to leave, you know, we were both headed to the airport to go to our um, homes slash duty stations, right? And on our way to the airport, you know, this boy, he looked at me and he was like, I love you. And I was like, you love, you love me? You know, like, um, I don't know, like he just gave me, he just gave me butterflies. Like, I was like, I love this boy too. Like, I just felt like, you know, I was in love, you know, cause I've never had um, someone, I've never experienced like an opposite sex intimate relationship with someone where it was where it was mutually like enjoyable. Like I liked him, he liked me, you know, we had a connection, we had a vibe. I never had that. And for me growing up, in regards to like boys, you know, I've always liked the guy more. Or yeah, like the guy more. I've always kind of like been like done wrong by like guys. So this was like my first experience of, I was just like, oh, this is, 
this is this is what I'm supposed to be feeling right now. So um, yeah, I ended up going home uh, for a couple of weeks before I went to my first duty station. He went home for a couple of weeks before he went to his first duty station. And um, I get to my first duty station, he lets me know that he wants to spend his last week of, uh, of liberty with me at my new duty station, our station in um, Bethesda, Maryland. And so like his, his mom and dad had drove all the way to Bethesda, Maryland from Cleveland, Ohio to drop him off and like we spent our entire week together. And it was like beautiful, like I was like in awe. But even then, even then there were signs. There were signs of like um, insecurities. There were signs of um, um, a little bit of like, like control. Like, and when I say control, like he wasn't like a controlling person where he was just like, oh, you can't wear this or you can't do that or something like that. It was more so of like, you know, he would see something, he would feel some type of way about it and he would try to like force like a change or an answer or you know try to kind of like i don't know get a response out of you if he didn't believe you like he was just more so that but it was more so on the assertive slash aggressive side and for me you know i didn't i didn't take heed to that i didn't take heed to that as a sign you know i just looked at that as like oh he really likes me and you know he just he just really likes me so I don't know, that's just how I looked at it. And, you know, as time goes on, like, you know, there was an incident where um, it was my 19th birthday came up, like right around the corner. And I was like going to Washington DC with um, two of my friends and he was uncomfortable about that. You know, he was on his way to um, Africa, if I'm not mistaken, to meet his ship. And, you know, he was just like at unease about the whole situation because we were supposed to spend my birthday together but last minute he had to meet his ship overseas so he was just like very uncomfortable about it made me feel very uncomfortable about it because i felt uncomfortable my friends were very uncomfortable and honestly that was like another sign um it was more so like another sign of like wanting to have like control over a situation in my brain at the time i looked at it as like oh he really likes me he really cares and that he just doesn't want me to put myself in a situation where i could possibly jeopardize like our relationship so that's how I looked at it and then you know honestly let me take it back let me take it back a little bit um when my grandmother first met him um when I introduced him to my family for the first time well actually honestly let me take it back a little bit more let me take it back a little bit more because your family no and I and I and I say that because I feel like you should always listen to your mom Always listen to your, especially your mom. Your mom knows, like your mom knows what's best. Especially listen to your mom, but like my mom and my grandma peeked some things. So before my mom even met him, um, she saw a picture of him and she was just like, mm, I don't know, something about him. And I'm like, how are you gonna tell me something about him? And you've never even met him. So originally I thought that she was just like, judging him because he was light skinned, he had tattoos, you know. Um, but when she finally met him, she said to me, she's like, I don't know, something about him. He remind me of X, Y, and Z. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I found out that he put his hands on you. And I was like, huh? Like, why would you say that? Like, what are you talking about? And then maybe um, when my grandmother first met him, um, you know, I'm a, I'm such a like lover. Like, you know, I'm so quick to call somebody like my family. You know, so. When my grandmother first met him, um, we were at my parents' house and my mom, my mom and my grandmother was upstairs and I was downstairs with him. And my grandmother comes downstairs, she's like, um, little girl, she comes to little girl, she's like, little girl, can you go upstairs real quick? And I was like, okay, and I told um, my husband to come upstairs with me. And my grandmother was like, uh-uh, he cannot go upstairs. He is not a part of the family. I was like, like what? I, that was just like so awkward and so embarrassing. So I ended up going upstairs and I was like, Grandma, why are you being so rude? She's like, I don't know something about him. He a little too quiet for me. He just seemed real sneaky. I said, seriously, like why are y'all like chomping down on this boy like that? Like I like him. <laughs> 
but they had their hunches about him um and like i said because they didn't like know him i thought that they were like judging him but mm -hmm. um okay so fast forward he came up with the idea to get married you know he was going to marry me anyway so you know let's just get married <laughs> and we got married pretty fast like we met in um well, we kind of sort of met in January. We officially met, I think, in like February, March. And we were talking to each other March, April, May. It was when we really got serious. He asked me to be his girlfriend um, in May. And um, June and then July, you know, we're talking about getting married. So after six, seven months of seeing each other and about two and a half months of actually dating, we decided to get married. And we literally just uh, took our young asses to the courthouse of Washington, D.C. and we decided to sign papers and get married. I was our own witness, okay? Um, and despite what my parents thought, like I think my dad had a conversation with him first met him and was like, you know, I don't care what you guys do, just don't run off and get married. We went against that, so we didn't tell anybody. The idea was to not tell anybody. We were still going to build on our relationship, date each other, you know. I was supposed to go overseas, actually. And my orders at my first duty station was only for two years. So that would like help us stay together if we were married, because we were singles and they could just send me anywhere, basically. But um, yeah, so once we got married, you know, things was like, things obviously took a more serious like shift. And I, like I said, I've always looked at it as if like, this boy just loved me. Like he loves me, I love him. You know, he just, you know, wants us to work. Like he wants things to like be a certain type of way, but I'm who I am. Like I'm not Jay, I'm a free spirited, like, person and um I don't know I think he just I think I was just too big for him like me I think my me my personality you know the way I think I think it was just like too big for him honestly it's like I feel like it was a little bit too much for him and he wanted to kind of like like tone it down like make it make sense he wants like I don't like sometimes a lot of things that I do don't make sense I'd be like all over the place I'm a Gemini but I think he wanted to like Form it into like a statue of like some sort like I don't know so we've always like clashed and so like I said after we got married you know things got a little bit more like intense in regards to like um, physical stuff so like he would like yoke me grab me by my neck choke me whenever we got into an argument or a disagreement he would like well, he wouldn't, he didn't begin choking me. He began like grabbing me by my neck, yoking me up, doing stuff like that. And, you know, um, I didn't see, I didn't see that as like me being a victim because when he would do stuff like that, your girl would start swinging back. Like I'd be like swinging back, like, no, you're not doing that. And of course I would never win that fight, but you know, that's how it started. And um, it slowly progressed into, you know, him choking me or him pinning me down. And I remember this one incident where um, my friend, my best friend at the time, we've been friends since I was like seven years old. My best friend at the time, she had like met him. We had like well, went out to dinner. It was cool, it was a vibe. And she had witnessed him like grabbing me like aggressively. She didn't like that. She didn't like that. And ever since then, she had like a bad, there was a bad taste in her mouth in regards to him. So but she's very blunt. She was like always blunt with like her words and stuff. And sometimes it will come off as like very rude because it's kind of like, girl, like, can we like, can we keep this conversation amongst us? Why you gotta let him know that you don't like him? Like, that, that's how I was back and I was like, come on now, I, was, I, I wouldn't do that to you. I wouldn't make you, I wouldn't put you in an uncomfortable situation like that. But, yeah, she was always like that. So one time, this was the first time I had went to go visit his family. Like before we even got married, he I never 
like saw like his family like i met his mom and his dad but i didn't get to meet like his family like his sisters his brothers his uncles you know all that his grandma you know so i finally we finally went to um cleveland he's from cleveland ohio we finally went to cleveland and his family was having like obviously like a bunch of functions and stuff like that so i was you know really excited to be there so one night we're just cruising and we go to the, the liquor store before we end up going to a hotel because we were staying in a hotel. And as we're going to the liquor store, my friend calls me and I think my phone is on, like connected to the car. And my friend, she calls me and she's like, what you doing, where you at? And I was like, I'm in Cleveland. And she was like, oh, you with that nigga? You with that nigga? And I was like, oh, I'm gonna call you back. And you know, he was like, what was that all about basically? Like what? And I was like, she just, you know, did the job, but you know, it's okay. I'm gonna just, you know, she, that's my friend. She's still there. You my man. You stay over there. Like, I don't, I don't need none of that, you know, going on. And he had let it go. Like he let it ride. I think kind of sorta in that moment. But you know, um, later on as the night goes, you know, alcohol is involved and stuff. You know, he gets. He starts to dwell into those real emotions of like how he really felt about that, you know, like why she don't like me, you know, da 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 da, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I would tell him like, you know, this is what she experienced, this is what she saw, you know, that's gonna always leave a bad taste in her mouth, like she just don't like you. But you know, I said that's okay, and time will tell, you know, time will like bring us all together. And I would make a joke like, you're Martin, she's Pam, like stuff like that, but. Like I said, we got back to the hotel, you know, more alcohol is involved at this point, and he decides to take my phone. Mind you, this isn't like the first time he's tried to take my phone from me or took my phone from me. But this time I felt like, okay, this is like overboard because he wanted to take my phone to not go through it, but to text my friend from my phone, like this long paragraph, kind of sort of like, putting her in her place slash telling him, telling her how he felt, you know, and I just felt like that was too much. Like I, I felt like he needed to stay in his place and she needed to stay in her place and we just leave it like that. So we got into like, I'm like, you know, we got into like a, a not a fight, but we got into like a tussle where I'm like trying to grab my phone from him and he's like holding it hostage, you know, he would like push me and I was like, no, give me my phone. He would like push me you know, things of that nature. And um, it got to a point where he like pinned me down on the ground and um, my arms were like tight to my side because his knees were on each side of my arms, squeezing them tight so that way I could not move. While he's literally sitting on top of me, mind you, this boy is like twice my size. I'm like 115 pounds. He's like, you know, on top of me. And he's like texting my friend. And that was very exhausting for me, like extremely exhausting um, because it obviously took him a while to get me down on the floor to that point where I could not move. So when he got finished with my phone, you know, he let me up. I got up, I was angry, I was upset, you know, um, kind of like talking shit, you know, being young, arguing. Me at my age, my big ass would have left. But me at that age, I was 19 years old, you know, I didn't leave. Um, I ended up getting in the shower and so as we were calling it a night, it's a nightcap if I'm not mistaken. So I ended up getting in the shower and as I'm in the shower, I'm like talking to myself, but I'm talking loud enough for him to hear me, like intentionally. That's that little shit that I used to do. Um, you know, little childish shit that I used to do. I used to, you know, go in a separate room, talk to myself, but talk loud enough for him to hear me. And I was in the shower and I was like, I can't believe he would fucking do that. I was just fucking stupid, bitch. And I called him the B word. Next thing you know. Hold on. What you doing? Hey girl. I'm in the middle of recording this video. I'm like almost done. I'm just trying to knock it out. And then I'm going to call you right back. Alright. Sorry, bye. Um... Yeah, so I was in the shower and I called him the B word. I was like, I can't believe this is he acting like a B. And I was like, he acting like a B. And he comes into the bathroom. Like, as you know, he literally comes to the bathroom and he opens up that shower curtain and he smacks me across my face. Like, smacked the dog crap out of me. 
And that was the first time he's ever struck me. Mind you, this had to have been in like September, October of 2014. So this was literally like a month and a half or two after we got married. Um, uh, so it was young because we got married July 31st of 2014. And um, in that moment, I've never experienced anyone striking me, any man striking me. Um, so, when he came into the bathroom and he opened that shower curtain up and he, I just remember that, I keep doing that because it's like bringing me back in that in that moment. He, uh, he looked at me and he was like, don't you ever call me a bitch again or something of that nature. And he turns around and he leaves out the bathroom. And I just stood there naked in the shower, 19 years old, confused. And I just started crying, like, and just in shock. Um, and that was the start of, that was the start of the true toxic cycle. And um, I stood in that shower for a long time, like, cause I just didn't know what to do. And I ended up like, I don't know, like, con like convincing him or texting my friend to tell her to call me or something of that nature. And, Kind of convincing him that I was just gonna take a walk and talk to my friend, and um, you know I'm telling her what happened, and you know of course she's like furious, like she just knew it, like she was furious, and she was like, "We need to get you to leave right now. We need to get you a flight, you know, da da da." And I just didn't know what to do. Like I was just like, like, like I kind of like internalized that moment because I was like. Well, like, what did I like? What did I do to deserve that? I'm like, well, I mean, was I wrong for calling him a bitch? Like, this is my husband. And was I wrong for? My camera had like turned off, but yeah. In that moment, I was like, was I wrong for saying that? Like, I felt like I felt like yes, you were wrong for saying that. You, you don't call your husband a bitch. Like, you know, that's that's the mindset of. So I was low key like high key internalizing that moment of trying to be like, okay, well you know, just don't do that again. Like, don't try, don't do that again. Even though I knew that he was wrong, you know, I was like, okay, well, he was drunk and you know, whatever. But my friend, she was just like, no, that's unacceptable. Like, no, you need to leave, you know? And I was just like confused. I was like, felt like I was stuck in between a, a hard rock and a, a hard place and a rock. And I don't know, like I was outside talking to my friend for a while and like, he was like blowing up my phone, like asking me where I was at, what was I doing? And in, in that moment, like him blowing up my phone, calling me, her in my ear saying like, you need to leave, we need to figure out a plan. Um, she ended up convincing me. <laughs> she ended up convincing me at the time before I left, cause she, she thought that she convinced me to go back inside to pack my bags. And I thought that she convinced me to go inside to pack my bags as well. So when she said, well, before you go inside, you better key his car. Cause he had just got his car. He had just got his car um, that day. We had came from the dealership, and then that's when we went to the liquor store, we went back to the hotel, and we were gonna like, you know. Um, so she wanted me to keep his car, and so I, on the back of his hood, and on the front of his hood, I keep his car, and I put woman beater. And um, I was like, I'm going back in there, I'm gonna pack my bags, and I'm gonna get me a, a hotel, and I'm catch a flight in the morning. And I was like, I'm gonna call you back. So when I went inside, he was extremely apologetic. Like, he was so sorry. He could not believe that he did that. Um, he's never done something like that before. He loves me so much. You know, he was so, 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 so sorry. And um, I ended up not packing my bags. I ended up not leaving. And we ended up having sex. And we ended up going to sleep. And we ended up waking up that next morning, going to a family cookout as if nothing ever happened. And that was the beginning of that cycle. Um, where we would get into an argument, where things got physical, where we would have sex and um, we would wake up as if nothing ever happened. And I would do that because 
I felt like, okay, well, if you're gonna stay, there's no need of like holding this over his head. You know, you have to, and I remember telling Brandon this one day. Um, Brandon, this was like, like a year and a half into our marriage. Um, there was a time where he uh, broke the windows out of my new car, broke the windshield out of my new car. And I just knew that that was gonna be it. Like, I was like, this is it. Like, I can't do this anymore. And like, when it comes to my belongings and things that I feel like I work hard for, when they get destroyed, it's easy for me to just be like, well, I thought it was easy for me to be like, oh no, I'm not doing this. And just like, go my way. But um, when that happened, so that's when I told um, my friend Brandon, I was like, I never told him, that, I don't think that I told him or shared with him that he was like putting his hands on me, but I shared with him that he had like broke the windows out of my car. And that next day he was like, are you okay? Like, do you need, like what's going on? And I had texted him. He had reminded me of this recently. I had texted Brandon and was like, in a marriage, you have to compromise. Like in a marriage, you have to compromise. That's where my mind was at then. I was like, in a marriage, you have to compromise. So. I was compromising my feelings and emotions the following day because I didn't want him to feel uncomfortable. I didn't want him to feel like I didn't love him. I didn't want him to feel like I was holding his his um, failures or mistakes against him. You know, in my brain, I look, always looked at it as if like, okay, like, like I said, I never looked at myself as like a victim because when we would get into it, your girl would like try to fight back. And though I would never win, it was just more so like, I just felt like I was a strong person. I felt like I was a strong person and that I was in love and that I was in love with someone who had demons and I wanted to help him through his demons. And I, I, I internalized everything. It was like, okay, well, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect, he's not perfect. I love him and he loves me. Yes, he did this and I know men are not supposed to do this, but we're gonna get through this together and there's gonna be a happy ending. That was always my mindset. So I never looked at myself as like a victim. And um, yeah, I was looked at as if I was compromising and I was, um, I was making sacrifices for a brighter future with us, you know. And um, you know, I had like, you know, very soon learned that um, his parents you know, went through that phase where they were um, physical with each other, and um, even I think at that at that at that time, I think that they had moments where they were um, they would fight and be physical with each other. And the next day, like uh, two lovebirds, like um, and his parents had been together since I think his mom was like 14, 15. So you know, I was always like. I don't know, I, I looked at that like, like, well, if they can be in this space now, even though they weren't perfect, then, you know, me and him kind of like have a head start and that, you know, just give it some time and we'll be like this beautiful couple because we always talked about like our dreams and aspirations of like wanting to do this and be that to each other. And I don't know, long story short, yeah. So, um, I think I kind of got off track, but, yeah, I, I remember telling Brandon, like, in a marriage, you have to compromise. So, um, yeah, I'm still here. And, um, it was just, like I said, that was like, the, that was like the cycle. So, like, there's been, like, plenty of moments, plenty of times, like, too many, too many times that I can't even, I can't even, like, I don't even want to sit here and like go through every single incident that happened between him and I that was really bad. Um, just know that there was, there was, I can't even count on two hands how many times, you know, I had a black eye or rings around my neck, scratches around my neck, um, bruises on my arms, you know. Um, it was just a lot. And I think it wasn't until, it wasn't until it wasn't until, actually, this was like the mid-peak of the relationship. In 2016, there was an incident on my birthday um, 
that was the first time we actually lived together. So in May of 2016, we had got our first apartment together. I had got stationed from Bethesda, Maryland to Norfolk, Virginia because he was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia. And we got our first apartment together in Town Center, um, Virginia Beach. And um, when we were living together, obviously things were physical, you know, things got physical. He like choked me, you know. He ended up like, I think biting my hand um, and at that point, it was just like really bad. Like I ended up like calling my dad or somebody called my dad or some, something happened where my parents knew about it. Like, okay, now my parents know. And him and my dad had like a dialogue. Don't recall what their dialogue was about, but um, it was just bad. So I decided to stick it out because my husband, I loved him and he was sorry and that we were gonna be in a better space, you know. Um, my birthday was the day before it was time for him to go off on deployment. So I decided to throw myself a birthday party at our clubhouse in our new apartment and invite friends, um, friends that I went to school with, friends that I had around the city, you know, to my birthday celebration. And it was that night, it was that night that he um, wanted to he, was, he wanted to ensure that we were in a good space before he left the next day. Um, and when we were at my party, in that moment, I was like, why did you wait until right now to want to talk about it? I don't want to talk about it right now. We can talk about it in the morning on, your, on the way to the ship, like on the way to me dropping him off to the ship. And um, he didn't want to do that. He wanted to talk about it right then and there. He wanted to make sure that we were okay. He wanted to make sure that we were good and that we were solid before he left for deployment. And I just felt like that was like very selfish of him. And he felt like it was very selfish of me to not want to talk about it in that moment. Um, I felt, he felt like I wasn't putting our marriage first. And I felt like if that was something that he wanted to talk about, we should have talked about it before party like you know this is my 21st birthday you know that's where my mind was at you know just young and um um we ended up he ended up like grabbing me and i was like you know don't put your hands on me or, or whatever and someone had got involved and it was a guy that was there got involved and he was like yo no like bro like we're not doing it and they ended up getting into a scuffle long story short later on that night he comes back to the apartment wanting to talk, but by that time, you know, the guys and the girls are in my apartment, you know, consoling me, making sure that, you know, I'm okay before everyone leaves. But when he gets there, you know, he's like, I want to talk to my wife. And the guys are like, well, we don't feel comfortable leaving you with her by yourself. So whatever y'all got to talk about, y'all got to talk about it, like, or going to me. And I just wasn't here for it. Like, you know, I, I, I was under I, I was under the influence. You know, I just didn't care to talk about him. Like, I just wanted it to be over. Like, I was so tired of like going through the roller coaster and et cetera, et cetera. And because he was leaving, he was not having it. Like, he was like, No, I want to talk to my wife. Like, I want to talk to you right now before I leave. And I just was not having it. And um, somehow. Him and one of the guys ended up getting into a scuffle. I got extremely upset and I had like picked up a candle and I like threw it in that direction and it hit him. And um, according to him, he was under the impression that one of the guys had like striked him with a bottle or something. So he ended up leaving and he ended up coming back um, with a gun loaded. And um, when he started like acting, but you know, acting out, you know, me, by that time, me and the girls were in the apartment by ourselves. So we went into the closet scared for our lives because he just came back with a gun. And um, the girls are screaming for the guys because they had literally just left. So by this time, they're probably like literally down the hallway at the elevator. And next thing you know, um, they're screaming for the guys. He runs out into the hallway. And I, apparently he runs out into the hallway, the guys are like running back to the apartment to make sure everyone's okay, and he shoots one of the guys and that I went to high school with. And after that happened, he came back to the apartment, he um, came into the closet, and he put that gun in my face and said, if anything happens to him, he just wanna kill me. And that always stuck with me. That always stuck with me. And I, and I say that, and I put emphasis on that because obviously that stuck with him too. 
because he threw that in my face a few times towards the end of our relationship, reminding me that if anything happened to him, i.e. if I called the police on him, if I pressed charges on him, he was gonna kill me. He was gonna come back and kill me. He said, you remember what I told you that night in the closet? Like he would do that and that just like, it's, it's such an eerie feeling. It's like, it's just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, even after that, you know, he left, he ended up getting pulled over, he ended up getting arrested, um, and I ended up bailing him out about a month later. And um, I wrote with him, like, I was that ride and die, that ride and die, ride and die, and ride and die, and ride and die. And, you know, I did that, we went through the court system for like a year and a half or so, he ended up getting off, like, we fought hard. He ended up kind of sort of getting off. Yes, he um, was charged and convicted of um, a felony and a misdemeanor, um, two felony, or a felony and a misdemeanor. Um, but he was able to get time served, and I think he did like a month or two in jail, and then he five years of good terms. He really lucked up and ended up being able to obtain his career in the United States Navy and um, get out with the honorable discharge as a felon. So this man has like walked through earth, you know, not really having to suffer the consequences behind his actions. So of course, you know, people are going to do own, as much as they're allowed to do basically. So, and um, I was an enabler in that, in that process. I was an enabler, his mom was an enabler, his father was an enabler, you know, the court system was an enabler, the United States Navy was an enabler because, you know, they knew, you know, um, that we were in a um, extremely toxic relationship where he would like put his hands on me, black my eyes, sometimes I would go to work with my eyes black, you know, and they did what they could do by putting like a temporary protective order for like six months and obviously we will still see each other and um, you know, obviously we will still be married. So it's like, it's not much that they could do, but they definitely could have done more, i.e. kicked his bad ass out of the damn military. But I mean, and, I, and I, I'm not here to like bash him because you know, the it wasn't the entire relationship that was toxic. Like obviously we had amazing moments, great moments, loving moments within the relationship that I that we both held on to. And then there was also those moments that kind of just like trumped it all. Fast forward, um, fast forward I moved fast forward we both get out of the service in 2019 and I decided to move to New York. He didn't necessarily have a plan of what he wanted to do after the military, but I did. And I told him, I shared with him that I wanted to move to New York. That's always been my dream. I wanted to go to cosmetology school because I found my um, my newfound love, which was um, being a hairstylist. And I said, I want to go to the best school there is. Um, and um, I want to live in New York City. And he wasn't too fond of that idea. He wanted us to go to, he would have preferred for us to go to Cleveland, Ohio. and. Um, um, stay with his family, you know, save up money, and then we figure out where we would go next. But that just wasn't enough for me, that it wasn't the plan. I didn't want to go to Cleveland, Ohio. I just imagined me going to Cleveland, Ohio, being stuck, somehow getting pregnant because, you know, everybody in his family, you know, they have children, his friends and stuff, they have kids, they're married, they have, you know. So I imagined being sucked into that type of lifestyle, and I knew that that's not what I wanted for myself. So I stood firm in what I wanted to do and I and, and, and I stood on that and I told him like, you can either come with me or you could not. You know, some may call that selfish because you're married, you're supposed to compromise. But in that moment, I was like, no, I'm not, not doing this. Like I'm, I'm doing this, you can either come with me or not. And he decided to come with me um, and we, we got an apartment together in New York um, where um, I was actually, we got like a three bedroom. Um, one of the bedrooms uh, was shared by my cousin. Um, she lived in New York at the time. And um, I occupied, well, we occupied two, the other two bedrooms. So we were paying two thirds of the rent, right? 
And, you know, I was on my hustle mode. Like, I was in New York, the hustle and bustle city, you know. I found me a job. I was in school from 9 to 5. I worked every single day after school up until, like, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I would come home, take a nap, get back up in the morning, take the train, and be to school by 8 o'clock. Like, that was my, like, er. And then the days that I were off, I was at home, I was trying to figure out, okay, like, what audition can I go to? Like, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to be an actress. Like, I wanted to be a hairstylist. I wanted to do everything. So, like, I was just, like, in that hustle and muscle, bustle, like, grind mode. And, you know, for him, he still was kind of, like, unsure of what he wanted to do. So, um, he decided to go to barber school. Because when we were in the military, he was a barber. And, um... I was like, okay, well, you know, you can get your license. That can be a way for you to make money. You know, we can, we can, we can get, a, we can get a, a, a salon slash barber together. Like, I thought that we was gonna be like that power couple where we was like entrepreneurs and we did the damn thing. Like, that was my ideal. And so he went to barber school in Manhattan, and um, that was it. So like, you know, with me, me doing all of this extra stuff, I'm like, okay, well, so what's the plan? Like, what's next? You know, your barber school is only for four months. You know, what's the plan? Like, what do you want to do next? And he never had like a solid answer of what he wanted to do. And he never really wanted to talk about it. And I feel like he felt like I was like putting pressure on him. And I honestly wasn't trying to put pressure on him. I was just trying to get an idea of like, okay, well, what's next? Like, you're my partner. Like, what's next? And, and I wasn't getting anything. Like, I would see him when I come home from work. He would be up playing the game, you know, he'd play the game all day, all night. I mean, outside of the game, his routine was school, gym, video game, school, gym, video game. And for some people, that's okay, that's a, that's content, as long as the bills are being paid, you know, um, as long as he's not out here in the streets, you know, some women would be content with that. But for me, I wasn't content with that. And, and I will share with him, like, you know, you don't get praised, I wasn't, I didn't, we grew up differently. You don't get praised for um, doing what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to make sure that your bills are paid. You're supposed to, you know, um, just take care of yourself. You're supposed to do things like that. And, you know, you're like you're, you're married, like you're together. You're supposed to not be out here in these streets, you know? Um, you know, you get, you get praised and rewarded for being extraordinary and doing things that aren't necessarily expected from you and not saying that that was like the right mentality to have but that's just like how I grew up like you don't you don't get a cookie for for graduating high school because that's what you're supposed to do now graduating from college now that's an accomplishment you know um in in his family it was you know it wasn't like that, and you know, he, you got praised for every little good thing that you did, and um, and not saying that that was wrong. That's not that's not a bad thing at all. It's just we just grew up differently. So like, you know, he expected me to be content with, you know, him not being out here in these streets, and you know, um, you know, things just being what they were, and I wasn't. I always wanted more. I always wanted more, and I and I always wanted more for us, and. Um, you know, that eventually took turn and created like insecurities and um, friction between us. And there was one night where we had gotten to an argument and he had punched me and blacked my eye. And that was tough, you know, that was a, that was a, that was an, uh, that was a, that was a hard night. After he did that, I just was like in shock. Like, I didn't even fight back, like I was just, in, and shocked that like we're in New York, it's supposed to be our first start, and I'm back at square one again, like with a black eye, like having to not, having to skip out on school because I don't want to go to school with my eye closed. Like it was that bad, and um, I like locked myself in the room and I just asked him to stay in the living room. And even that night, he was like he wanted to talk to me, like he was like you know he was sorry. No, no, he was like. He was like, um, he was like, I, I think, he, if I'm not mistaken, like, he was inter I, he made me still to internalize that situation. Like, if I would have just let him be, 
if I would have just let him be, and I said let him be because um, I had came home one day and um, I was like about to make dinner and I asked him if he ate yet. And he was like, um, yeah, he ate or whatever. So I made myself some dinner and I came and got in the bed and I wanted to be intimate and he was like, didn't want me on him because um, we had kind of like got into an argument early that morning. Well, it wasn't even an argument. It was just more so like, he wanted to not go to school and I told him to go to school and he was like basically telling me to mind my business and he didn't want to go to school because it was raining outside and I was like boy I have to go to school and I have to work take an umbrella like I have an umbrella so like we had like a little disagreement and so when I came back home that day he just wasn't feeling me and I just thought that that was extremely petty so you know I got upset and I got up and I was like I'm about to go to the store do you want to go to the store and he told me no. I went to the store. I ended up calling my best friend Adrian, and I'm like talking crap. And um, I'm sitting on. By the time I come back, I'm sitting on the steps in front of the um, apartment door, and I'm on the phone with Adrian. And he texts me. He's like, "Whatever you're doing, basically, like he basically saying like, whatever you're doing, it better be worth it because I'm never gonna see him again." So because I was outside for so long, he assumed that I like went somewhere. So I went in the house, I was like, why would you text me that? And, but when I went in the house, he was no longer in the room, he was in our living room. Mind you, my cousin's room is right there, so if she was to come out, she would see him sleeping in the living room, and to me, that was just like embarrassing. So I was like, why are you in his living room? And he was like, I don't know where the fuck you been at. And I was like, seriously? Like, you could've just called me, like, why would you text me that? And he was like, man, just leave me alone, leave me the F alone. And I was just confused on why he was talking to me like that because even though I felt some type of way, I wasn't disrespecting him, I didn't violate him, you know? So it just made me feel some type of way that he was like treating me mean. And um, I had pettily turned the um, living room lights on. And I was like, well, if I can't sleep peacefully in my house because you wanna be out here, you can't sleep peacefully in your house either. Stupid. And um, so that turned into like an argument and then um, he had like walked past me to like go get his headphones because he was like, you know what, I'm done. Like, I'm not about to argue with you anymore. And when he went to go grab his headphones, I went to snatch his headphones. And when I snatched his headphones, he just turned around and he originally fucked at me. And then I was like, I fucking dare you. Like you would not. And you know, words were exchanged and next thing you know, bam. And I was just like, just in shock. So like, long story short, you know, he, he tries coming back into the room saying, you know, like, like, what did, like, what did he, like, what did I want from him? He kept asking me, like, what do you want from me? And I told him, like, I just needed space. Like, I didn't want to talk to him right now. Like, I was tired of, like, going through this. Like, this relationship is just, like, toxic. I don't even think I want to talk about all of this. I'm just going to skip all of this and fast forward to... 2019, because I'm actually running out of time. I was supposed to be meeting a friend, um, me and her were supposed to be having dinner. But fast forward to 2021, um, you know, we had already separated like three times, three, four times already. And this was supposed to be like the fresh start. Like, okay, I'm leaving New York, I'm moving to Atlanta. This is gonna be our fresh start, you know. Once you get yourself together, because he was still living at home with his parents, once you get yourself together, you know, you come down here and, you know, we figure it out and we just like, just take over the city, you know what I'm saying? That's what I thought, like, we just take over the city, like, you be, you know what I'm saying? We just be this fine-ass couple, you know, he was into working out, like, you know, he was literally like a gym rat, so I was like, you know what, um, we just gonna be the, you know, I just had this vision, just like, I had this vision, still a little girl mentality, and, um, I found my apartment. Fast forward to, to the incident, I, found my apartment, I was so excited. I moved in, you know, he, he um, traveled from Cleveland to Atlanta um, to spend the weekend with me. He's supposed to spend the week, the week with me actually. And um, in, our, in my new apartment, because it wasn't like he was moving in, but it was in my new apartment. And um, I was just so excited, like, and there was a lot of things that happened over the summer as well that was like unacceptable, but I like, really wanted that marriage to work, or relationship to work. And um, like I said, fast forward to that night, so I'm pretty sure you guys wanna know like, okay, well, what happened? Like what made him take it this far? Um, 
Um, so he, he flies in, you know, he Ubers. He wants to Uber here because he wants me, you know, at home um, cooking or about to cook, having like his glass of wine waiting for him, you know, me looking like sexy or whatever, like that's what he wanted. So he um, Ubered here and I had to go downstairs to escort him upstairs because you need to be escorted because you need a key to come upstairs. So I had like went downstairs and when I saw him, I was like, hi. But when I saw him, his face, like his demeanor was completely different from the person that I had just talked to 30 minutes ago. And he, he came into the elevator with like this dark energy. And I was like, what's going on? My camera keeps stopping, but um, yeah, he came into the elevator with like this dark energy. And I was like, what's going on? Like what's happening? And he was like, some guy used your name to get into the elevator. I said, excuse me? He was like, some guy used your name to get into the elevator. What's up with that? And I was like, I just moved here. I don't know anyone here. I'm pretty sure you're mistaken. And he was like, no, I'm not. He shouldn't even get into the elevator. And I was like, okay, stop playing. This is weird. Like, if this type of energy that you're bringing here, like, and before I even finished that statement, he was like, nah, I'm just joking. And he like went to grab me to give me a hug. And I was just like, that's weird. Like, that's not funny. Like, your sense of humor is weird right now. Okay, so fast forward, we get off the elevator, we're walking into the apartment, and before we come into the apartment, I was like, I told him, I was like, now, before we walk in here, I need you to reevaluate your energy because it's a little off right now. And, um, actually, no, that's not what happened. But when we, when we were walking into the apartment, I had trash bags and boxes by the door, and I was like, um, I said, before you get settled, can you help me take this stuff to the shoot? And he was like, all right, so we were walking to the shoot, and he asks me, he's like, what made you choose this building? And I was like, huh? And he's like, no. He said, what made you choose this hotel? That's what he said. And I put emphasis on that. He said, what made you choose this hotel? I was like, this is not a hotel. And he was like, you know what I mean. What made you choose this building? And I said, oh, because of the floor to sill windows. It was um, one of the first apartments that I found that was in the budget that had floor to sill windows. And he was like, it shows a lot of men in this building. Mind you, by this time, we're at the trash chute. And he's like, it's a lot of men in this building. And I was like, seriously? I was like, what does that have to do with anything? He's like, you sure that's not why you chose this um, building? And I said, hold on, wait a minute. I said, is this what we're doing? He's like, I'm just saying. And I said, no, you're not just saying anything. Like, you're being weird. And um, I let him continue to put the things in the trash chute. And then as we're walking back to the apartment, you know, you know, quiet. But as we walk back to the apartment, I stopped him and I was like, before we step in here, I really need for you to revitalize your energy because that's not what we're doing. Like, this is this this is supposed to be you and I. And he agreed. He was like, you know what, you're right. I'm tripping. And he was like, I'm just gonna take a walk. So I'm like, well, where are you gonna walk? Cause you need a key. I didn't feel comfortable giving him my key. I haven't felt comfortable giving him my key since he left that first apartment after striking me and blacking my eye. I've never felt comfortable giving him a key. So I was like, where are you gonna go? You need a key to like maneuver around the building. And he was just like, I just need to take a walk. I'm gonna take a walk. And I was just like, okay, take a walk. He'll find his way, like whatever. So he went, he took his walk. I was in the house, I was cooking. He came back in and um, he goes into the bathroom and he ends up barcading himself in the bathroom for like a long time. And by this time, I'm like, wrapping up cooking. So by this time, dinner is like, damn, you're done. And I hear him walk from the bathroom through my closet into the bedroom and he ends up slamming the door. So I'm like, get the, like what the fuck is happening? I'm so confused. I'm like, why isn't he out here talking to me? Like, we were just lovey-dovey over the phone and now you're here and you're being weird. Like, what's happening? So when he slammed the door, I went to the room and I was like, what's going on? Like, why would you slam the door? And he's like, I didn't even do that. And I was like, okay, well, can you leave the door open? Like, why do you have the door closed? And he was like, oh, I didn't know if he wanted to hear what I was watching. He was watching something on his phone. And I was like, well, I mean, I would prefer for you to be out here. Like, come talk to me. And dinner's almost done. And he was like, all right, I'm coming. So maybe like 10 minutes after that, he finally comes out, um, you know, and you know, the mood switched again. You know, it's kind of like, it kind of feels forced, but the mood switched into something more positive. So he's like, you know, smiling now. And and I just knew that that was forced, but he's like smiling, you know, like, oh yeah, dinner's cool and we're just like talking or whatever. And then we get to like a comfortable spot. 
um, in our dialogue and he's like, can I be honest with you? And I was like, yeah, what's going on? Of course. And he was like, well, it was this guy downstairs. Um, when I had said your name to the front desk people, they, he was like looking at me. And I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, I'm just saying like he was looking at me and I was just like, why is he looking at me? So I'm thinking like, okay, maybe there's somebody that um, she like low key messing with. And I'm like, I just moved here. Like, why do you think that? Mind you, yes, we've been like off and on, but I'm like, I literally just moved here. Like, like, why is that the first thing that comes to your mind? Like, you know, you're here, we're here. Like, this, like, this is supposed to be you and I. Like, what's going on? And he was like, I don't know. I mean, I, that's what I was thinking. So I was trying to figure out why he was looking at me. So I made a joke, and I was like, Well, you are in Atlanta. Maybe he was just checking you out. And he was like, Nah, I don't think that was it. I said, okay, well, what do you think it is? Because I'm telling you, like, that what you're thinking is far from what, it, uh, I said, it's far from the truth. And he, um, he was like, yeah, you're right, I could be tripping. Da, da, da. I said, no, it's not that you could be tripping. I was like, using your terminology, you are. So I just need for you to, like, really reevaluate your energy and realize, remember why you're here. And he was like, um, I, said, I said, remember why you're here. And he was, he said something. And I was like, I think he like asked me the question, like, like why is he here? Something like that. I said, if you have to ask me or question why you're here, then maybe you shouldn't be. And me saying that, it was like, it went from like, why the fuck am I here then? Like, it just went from this just, it was just like so uncalled for. Like, just so, like the energy was just, so dark, it was just so uncalled for. So at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm tired. Like, I'm so tired, especially all the things that happened over the summer. At that point, I told him, I said, you know, this is our like last straw. Like, whatever comes out of this week is what comes out of this week. Like, and that's it. Whether we go left or right, that's it. And I'm tired. And I told him that, and he continued on, like, you know, so I just shut down. Like, I shut down. Like, I didn't want to talk. I was like, you know what? It's okay. Like, we don't even have to talk about it. Like, let's just move on. Let's just, like, you know. And he just kept asking, like, well, if you don't want to talk about that, why am I here? Why am I here? He just kept forcing it. And I was like, I just got quiet on him. Like, I just didn't want to talk. I already felt where that energy was going. And I didn't want to do that. Like, I just moved into my apartment. I was happy. I was excited for him to be here. And now all of this, it was just so odd. So I like grabbed my laptop and I like came into this corner of my apartment and I sat on the floor. And when I did that, he just got so upset. And I was like, I said, honestly, if you can't control yourself, I need for you to leave. And he got so upset that I asked him to leave. Um, to like it wasn't it wasn't that I was asking him to leave, like go catch a flight and go back home. I needed him to leave because he wasn't about to keep disrespecting me in my own home. Like he was like calling me outside of my name, calling me a bitch. You know, doing all of this extra stuff, and I'm like, I need for you to get your stuff, and I need for you to leave, and we can revisit this conversation at the time. And I said that, and he was like, I'm not going no effing where. And like, mind you, I'm sitting here in this corner, and he runs up on me, and he stooped down to my level, and he was like, you know, bitch, if you, it's just so evil. He was like, Phew. he was like, um, bitch, if you tell me to leave again, I'm gonna break your face. I'm like, seriously, like, why are you acting like this? I said, look at yourself. And then he was like, um, he was just so angry, like, some, some, something, bitch, like, don't effing play with me. Like, you tell me to effing leave again, I promise you, be out and kill you. Like, just a totally different person. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, Najee, you're so stupid. I just felt so stupid and vulnerable at that moment. It, like, broke my heart. So, like, um, you know, he kept pacing back and forth, you know, ramping on and on and on about just like whatever. And, you know, he kept calling me outside my name and I said, like, what, what you're not gonna do is continue to disrespect me in my house. Like, if you need to get, if, I said, if you need to gather yourself and get yourself together, that's what you need to do. Go get your hotel and we can bring you. No, he was not having it. Like, he got so upset. He like took the bottle of wine, was throwing wine all over the walls, all over the floor. Like, literally taking the bottle, dumping it upside down and like throwing it so that way wine's all over the walls. And I was just like, I was sitting in the corner like crying and he was, he was telling me that I was like victimizing myself. Like, oh, you're trying to be a fucking victim. Like, I said, I just need you to leave. Like, I just really need you to leave. If you cannot leave on your own, I'm going to have you escorted out. And when I said that, he ran up on me again and he bugged at me and he hawk spit in my face. Like literally hawk spit in my face. 
And I just sat there and took that shit because that was like the third time in, within the past three years and in total of our relationship that he like hawk spit on me. So, you know, um, and every single time, I just was so shocked. I felt so belittled and so like disgusting. I never budged, cause that's, in that moment, like I'd be so scared. Like if he can do something like this, oh my God, like Lord knows what he can do. And this wasn't even like the worst thing he's ever done. Um, I don't even wanna talk about that though, but yeah, he did that. So when he finally like went into the room and I noticed that he was in the room for um, a good amount of time, I got up and I went to the door and I snuck out of the door. But by the time I'm leaving out, he notices that I'm leaving out and he like tries to come after me. But by this time I'm already in the hallway and he doesn't know that there's cameras or anything like that. So he didn't come out into the hallway. He was just like come in, I, I come in and I'm like, no, I need for you to leave. Like I need for you to gather your things and I need for you to leave. If you do not leave on your own, I'm gonna have to have squirt it out and um so he ended up like grabbing the bags and i like stood by the elevator and there was this man at the elevator and i asked him at the time i didn't realize that you didn't need a key fob to go down to the lower level to exit the building so when i was standing by the elevator the man by the elevator i was like excuse me are you going down to such such floor and he was like yeah i was like I was like, great, could you escort my friend out? I said that. I was like, could you escort my, um, I said, can you escort my friend downstairs to the uh, such and floor? And he's like, yeah, I got you. Okay, cool. So he hears me say that. So he's like coming around the corner. And as I notice he's coming around the corner, I'm like walking back to my apartment. So like we're meeting each other. So when I pass him, he like passed me and pivots immediately. And he like starts to follow me and I stopped in my tracks. So I was like, no, like last thing I wanted to do was like go back to my apartment and he like bum rushed me back into the apartment and I'm trapped. So I stood right there and I was like, um, you just need to go. Like we can talk another time, but like, right now you need to go. Like I don't trust you. And um, he got so upset. He felt like I was showing off in front of this man at the elevator. And in that moment he called spit on me again and he called me a bitch and just like all of this stuff. And um, um, I can't remember. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So in that moment, like the man, he's just like, this ain't none of my business. So the guy gets into the elevator and as soon as I heard that mother freaking elevator door close, I knew it was a wrap. I knew it was a wrap because I saw my husband at the time, he was like looking, like as he's like talking his crap, I saw his, I, I, I was paying attention to him in every single one of his moves. Now in, in this in these moments I'd be trying to calculate, okay, so if I do this, what would he do? If I do this, what like how like I'd be trying to figure out how can I get out of the situation safely. And as I'm like doing that, I'm studying him and I see that he's looking in the sky, in the ceiling to see if there's cameras around. And as soon as that elevator door closed, I knew that he knew that there was no cameras in that damn hallway. And I knew that that was it for me. Like, I just knew that that was it. Not that that was it for me, like I was gonna die, but I just knew that that was it, like, it was on. And when that elevator door closed, he grabbed me by a chokehold, and he was choking me, he dragged me from one end of the hall, from my end of the hallway to the other end of the hallway. And I just remember a loud scream in my ear. It wasn't real. I later realized that it wasn't real, but it was like a, a loud scream in my ear. And it was like a bunch of all of our arguments and all of our fights. Like, I just saw it all. And I was gone. And I and I wake up to him shaking me. And he's like, Najee, Najee, like, Najee, wake up, wake up, wake up. And I had like quickly realized what happened. Like that was the most scariest moment of my life, hearing that loud scream. It was like a horrifying scream and seeing all of that and waking up to him shaking me, trying to wake me up. I quickly realized what happened, but I acted like I was out of it because I'm still trying to calculate how can I get out of this situation safely. and. He starts pacing back and forth because he's like, oh my God, what did I do? Like, why do I, like, he's like, why do I keep doing this? Like, you know, he's confused himself. Like, he's confused himself of like, like, how did we even end up here? And when I realized, you know, he paced one way, my fucking ass got up and I ran to my apartment. And he was this close to getting through, but I closed the door and I locked that damn door. 
And you know, he starts banging on the door like, Najee, like, I'm sorry, like, we can talk about it. Like, I don't have nowhere to go. And I was like, you do. I said, just get a hotel and we can talk about it another day. Like, you do have somewhere to go. You cannot stay here. Like, you cannot stay here. And he wanted to stay here so bad. He kept like banging on the door, trying to kick the door down. One moment I'm bitches, next minute I'm being dramatic, next minute he's sorry, it was just like a lot. Next minute he don't have nowhere to go, like why would I have him come all the way out here just to kick him out? Like it was just like a lot and I ended up like calling a friend, she ended up calling the police and no she ended up calling the front desk and no one came upstairs, no one came upstairs. Like he was outside of that door for like a good 45 minutes before he left on his own, like literally left on his own. And um, that was that night. That next day, I ended up um, doing um, my friend at the time's hair. So I was like, I took her to like the hair store, I went back to her house, I did her hair, you know, and I spent the, basically the entire day with her. And by the time I ended up leaving her apartment, you know, cause he was calling me all day, obviously. And, he had called me right as, as I was leaving the building and walking to my car and I answered the phone and I said, I've been working all day, I'm tired, we can talk about it tomorrow. That was the first thing that I said and he was like, no, what, like, what do you want me to do? I've been at this hotel, like, da, 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 da. I didn't come here to stay at this hotel, I'm wasting money, like, um, we can talk, like, come, we can talk tonight, you know, da da da, da. And um, I told him I wasn't going to that hotel. I told him that I was going home, I was tired, when I go to sleep, we talk about it the next day. And then um, he ends up Ubering to my apartment that night. Um, he left his things at the hotel. He ended up Ubering at, um, to my apartment that night and um, no, 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 he didn't leave his things at the hotel. He brought his things with him. Yeah, and he ended up moving into my apartment. And we ended up having, no, we didn't even do that. Yes, we ended up having sex that night. We ended up having sex, and I put emphasis on that because he put emphasis on that that night. So we, we ended up having sex that night, and I don't think I've ever even told him like that, but we ended up having sex that night. And, um, we were, we were doing a date night. We were gonna do a date night. And we ended up like going to his mom's birthday. We ended up going to the movies to go watch a movie. Um, we came back. Um, and no, 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 no. I think we ended up having sex that night. I'm sorry, that night. But we um, went to the movies. The next day, I had plans for us to hang out with these new group of friends that I um, made. Um, which was the um, my friend like Mary Ongly that came to the house that night and I had like a um, a pregame at my house and um, but that day I was like where's my camera I'm supposed to be vlogging today and I couldn't find my camera mind you my camera's been gone for like two days but I didn't notice until the day that I wanted to vlog and um, I couldn't find my camera I couldn't figure out where my camera was at so he needed to go to the barbershop to get a haircut I needed to go to the nail salon to get my hair my nails done. So I took him to the barbershop to get his haircut. I went to the nail salon. He met me at the nail salon. And as I'm getting my nails done, he's like, I have something to tell you. Can I tell you something? And I was like, I was like, yeah, what's going on? Mind you, I feel like I feel like things are back to normal because we had sex, because we had a great day the day before we went to the movies. You know, we went to dinner and you know, it was a great day. You know, now we're back to like nothing's ever happened. So he's like, I didn't want to tell you, I didn't know how to tell you, but that night I took your camera because uh, I knew that that would, that would be a way that I'd see you again. And um, he said that he tried to climb up. Mind you, I'm on the 26th floor of my building. He said that he was just so out of it. He don't know what he was thinking. He tried to climb up the building. Because um, he thought that I was on the 6th floor, not the 26th floor. But even then. And he fell and bust his head and broke my camera. So... He promised, he was like so sorry, he promised that we were gonna go to Best Buy, he's gonna buy me a new camera before the night started. And that's what happened. And by the time we came back home, you know, it's just like me putting everything in the back of my head because I don't wanna think about that. We're supposed to be moving forward. Like, you know, I love this man, he loves me, he has demons, no one's perfect. Like, let's just like figure this out and this is just, that's it. But I knew that that was it, like that was the final straw. I knew that was the final straw for me. 
And so like, all right, my friends come over, we're having a good time, and um, before we leave out, me and him, we're in the restroom, and I look at him in his face, and I'll say, you know, this is it's me, it's me and you, like, this is me and you, like, we're gonna have a good night, this is me and you, and he was like, he wasn't really in the mood to go out, but, I, you know, I told him, like, these were already the plans that were set and made, they, they were already set in stone, so, like, you know, you're just gonna have to, like, um, take one for the team tonight, and he was like, well, can you just promise me, like, when I'm ready to go, can we just go, and I was like, like, you know, you have demons, I said, I want you to know, you have some demons that don't want you to win, they like, they really don't want you to win. Like, they want you to fail. I said, but you're not going to let them. You're not going to let them win, and you're not going to fail. And and I'm looking at him, and even as I'm looking at him, I see, like, hollowness in his eyes. I see that shit. It's so eerie, but, like, I see that shit. But, like, like every a lot of times when I looked at him, it was like I was looking at... It was like I was looking at an empty soul sometimes. Like, it was like... He was so like, I felt like he was so, I don't know really how to explain it. Some things are just like unexplainable, but like, I know what I saw, I know what I felt, but I pushed it to the side because this was the man that I chose to be with, that I loved, and that he loved me, and that we were just gonna like, mm -hmm. So we ended up going out, you know, he was uncomfortable. He was uncomfortable because guys were looking at us, guys were coming up to us, you know. Um, mind you, um, yeah, he was just like extremely uncomfortable. So like, long story short, it got to a point where he was like ready to go and I wasn't. And I told him, and honestly, I feel like if, you know, all of that stuff didn't happen before, I feel like I didn't respect his feelings that night. I really didn't. I feel like the respect for me was kind of gone because I felt like he... I felt like he had no place to say like, oh, I'm ready to go. Like, I felt like, nah, like not tonight. Like, you know, you wanna be here. This is me and you. Like, I felt like this was the plan, you know, um, uh, that he needed to just like take this one to the chin. You know, I, I, that's kind of what I was feeling. But that was honestly what I was feeling. But to counter that, like, I didn't want him to know that that's what I was feeling. So, you know, when he was being like ag aggy and stuff, you know, being like extremely, you know, to a point where he made my friends feel uncomfortable. You know, I had like grabbed him by the um, by the hands and I ended up grabbing him by the face. And I was like, baby, it's just me and you. Like, I love you, like, it's okay. And I kissed him like in the middle of the club. And, you know, all right, cool. He kind of toned it down a little bit and then if I'm not mistaken, just like fast forward, okay, now he's ready to go. And I'm like, but he's being like real, um, he's being like very assertive. I don't wanna use the word aggressive, but I feel like that's just me, um, that is me. Um, um, I feel like that is me um, kind of like still, trying to make excuses but um you know for him he was being assertive to me he was being aggressive we had to like going outside because he wanted to talk he was like you know i'm ready to go let's go and i told him that you know he's being a little too aggressive for me and that you know if he wanted to leave you know he can leave um yeah my battery died but i'm just gonna like hurry up and end this because i really have to go but um, yeah, so he was, he, you know, he was like, he was ready to go, and I told him that he's being too aggressive and that um, I didn't trust going home with him. And it, I see, I was trying to internalize it again. I knew why I felt that way because just a couple of days ago, this man almost killed me and he was spitting on me, and I'm calling all types of bitches and stuff. And like, you know, even though in my brain I try to put that stuff in the back of my head because I want to move forward and I want us to like be in a good space, you know, um, that was like, and I said that to him. I didn't say that to him, but I said to him that I didn't trust him. You know, in in the state of mind that he was in right now, I did not trust him to go home with him in this very moment. So if he wanted to go home and decompress, do that, and I would meet him later. Obviously, that was not that was not acceptable. So as I'm like walking away, he grabs me, and when he grabs me. I'm like, don't freaking put your hands on me. But I'm like, not saying freaking. I'm like telling him like, don't effing put your hands on me. And as I'm like saying that, all I remember is just that. And I just remember being on the floor. I remember like 
I don't even remember much of anything. Like I was just like, after that, I feel like I was gone. Next thing you know, I'm waking up the next morning and my mouth is like, feeling like it's about to fall out of my face. And I'm like so confused. And the doctor, the nurses come in and they tell me, they show me the x-rays and they tell me that my jaw is broken here, it's broken, fractured here. And, and I was just like in awe. Um, and I was more so in awe, it's sad to say, but I was more so in awe that, that's my mom. I was more so in awe that he was not there when I woke up. And when I asked, when I asked like, okay, well, where is he? You know, my friends are like, oh, he ran off. Like, he gone, like he ran off. And that shit broke my spirit. Like, that shit, bro, I felt so betrayed. I felt so stupid. Um, I knew that that was it. Like, I just felt like so betrayed. I felt so stupid. I felt so hurt. And I, and I, and I, and the sad part is, I did not feel hurt, betrayed, and stupid because that happened, I felt hurt, betrayed, and stupid because he was not there when I woke up. Like, oh my God, like that's how deep, that's how deep, that's how deep I was in that. That's how, that's how, that's how deep that soul, that's how much of a knot that soul tie was in. And you know, having a couple of days, having like two, three days go by, and you know, I realized that my thoughts are still the same. Like I, I, I wish that he was there, like what, you know, and I felt betrayed because he wasn't there. I just knew I was like, yo, you're a bugging on Jay. Like you like you're 26 years old now. Like we don't have like if you allow this man to, he's going to kill you. Like whether he wants to or chooses to or not, like I mean he's told you on multiple occasions he's gonna kill me. He has told me on multiple occasions he's gonna break my face. Like for him to like hawk, for for your man to hawk spit on you, like he has no respect for you. Like this man, I don't care what he says, how much he loves you, how much he wants to be with you, how much he wants you to have his kids, how much he wants to spend the rest of his life with you. And when a man does stuff like that, he has absolutely no respect for you. And like I had to like forcefully tell myself that I'm like, yo, you gotta hold yourself accountable. And that's why I decided to like post those pictures on social media and just like just to really just hold myself accountable because I knew that I could not go back. And I knew that if I went back, that man was gonna kill me. If he can take it there, he can take it elsewhere. And that's where I'm at right now. So I'm gonna wrap this video up um, because I'm tired. I feel like I've been talking for a long time and this can go on and on and on and on and on, but I don't want it to drag on. I want to have a good night. I did my hair and makeup. I want to go outside. I want to have dinner. I want to take cute Instagram pictures. I want to just move on with my life. And um, starting um, this coming week, I'm going to be doing therapy because it's very much needed. Um, I also wanted to remind you guys about better health in the platform and um, how you too can benefit from therapy and how it's nothing to be considered taboo anymore. Um, don't be ashamed or afraid to talk about, you know, certain things. You know, I, even though I didn't really go into details about like, you know, what, what anxiety is, what depression is, and what PTSD is, um, we can do that in another video. And I do want to talk about that in another video. But I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you guys um, took something from my experiences. And um, I hope that if you are in a situation where you're experiencing violence in your relationship, that you just take accountability for your actions, um, i.e. by like allowing this to happen to you. And I want you to get your stuff and I want you to run as fast as you can. But I'm about to end this video. And um, if you took something from this, please give this video a thumbs up. Um, comment, DM me if you want to talk. You know, we can video chat on Instagram, whatever. But I gotta go. I love you, my Kendras. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Good night. Push P. Yeah. Corners in the paddock in my piece. Oh, push a P. Uh,